I see your dragon, and I raise you two more dragons. <laughs> Good game. You didn't get to see my other dragons, bro. <laughs> Hello, good game. Welcome back, ghouls and goblins. I hope you're all having a magical day. Thank you so much for taking the time to support the channel. We will be playing with Rakdos Aggro in Alchemy Best of One today within Diamond Rank. We're tearing it up, climbing up uh, with very little resistance. This deck performs surprisingly well within the meta, which is nice. And we'll showcase not only the deck list, but talk about the strategies and synergies held within, and then demonstrate all of that to the best of our ability within that diamond rank, like I talked about via the gameplay footage, and wrap up with our final thoughts, deck review, and the newly incorporated deck, uh, or not deck of the day, that would be crazy, but card of the day. Can you tell what it is? Can you? Let me know in comments below if you figured it out before we talk about it uh, to wrap up the show. So that's something new that we've been doing, so don't miss out on that. And before we get there, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel to help support me as a creator, and let's take a look at the deck. All right, here we go. Paint it black. This is a Rakdos aggro deck. Uh, I see a red door, and I want it painted black, quite literally. 60 card, alchemy, 2.4 average mana value with 24 creatures and 12 non-creatures. We do have 24 land in here, so it's quite consistently hitting those four drops and that's as high as we're going which is really really nice we can even ramp into it through the painter uh Kallion, reclusive painter for two a one two when it enters the battlefield create a treasure token other creatures you control enter the battlefield with an additional one plus one counter on it for each of uh the treasures that were spent to cast that spell which is really cool um not relying on it but it is uh nice to have in deck as a little something something we really do focus primarily though on uh, Rahilda Wanted Cutthroat, and this is what I would like to have that treasure utilized on if I can. If not, we'll send it in on one of those flyers. It's a 2-2 with first strike. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, exile a non-land card from their library at random. During any turn you've attacked with a wolf or werewolf, you may cast that card, and you may spend mana as though it were any color to cast that spell. This is the daybound side. Nightbound remains 2 power, 2 toughness. However, we go from first strike to double strike, which is great, and then that ability would trigger twice which is really cool. So the theme of the deck is to get the cutthroat out and make it flip tonight. We have a lot of instant speed spells, which will allow us to not cast on our turn, force it to become night, and then cast our instant speed removal spells on our opponent's creatures on their turn, and then smash them with a, a nice double strike and you know hopefully play a bunch of their creatures from their deck along that journey. Speaking of the instant speed removal, four copies of play with fire, two damage to any target if a player is dealt damage this way, scry one. So this is nice because we can actually use it as face damage to our opponent's uh, health points directly for a little bit of extended reach late game to win with the scry setting us up for our last turn, trying to look for a little bit of haste or uh, another form of direct damage, right? Very cool here. We have four copies of Infernal Grasp, destroy target creature, you lose two life. Uh, this is decent, mitigate your life total as best you can and save this for things you can't kill with the damage base removal, right? Uh, with a, a higher toughness or strength uh, that we're typically dealing with. We do have first strike within the Scion and Rahilda, which you can combo together with the damage effects like play with fire and a braid. A braid is our next removal spell for two. It uh, is instant speed and we get to choose one, dealing three damage to target creature or destroying target artifact, you know, killing the keys immediately. It's so good and you can deal three damage, which is really nice here as well. That's all the removal we have in deck. It's not a ton, but it's enough, right? Four copies of Play With Fire, four copies of Infernal Grasp and four copies of a Braid. Moving on, we've got Reckless Stormseeker. We're back to the aggro uh, portion of the deck. This is a two, three and at the beginning of combat on your turn, Creature you control gets plus one, plus zero, and gains haste until the end of turn. Daybound. Nightbound gets a plus in both its power and toughness. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gets plus two, plus oh, and gains trample and haste until the end of turn. Uh, absolutely amazing. So this is potentially a 5-4 as it's entering Nightbound. And if you do flip it to Knight on your opponent's turn with the Cutthroat, then uh, the Slasher is in right beside it, and that is just a massive amount of damage. It will also give haste to our four drops, right, uh, on our next turn, right? The Purveyor, a 5-6 with Flying and Trample. Wolf, 
Whenever your opponent casts a spell, create a blood token. And whenever it attacks, it gets plus one plus zero for each blood token that defending player controls. So this is going to grow into a 6-6, six, 7-6, six, six, you know, so on and so forth, which is cool. Non-legendary, so you can stack it. Also non-legendary and stackable is the Town Razor Tyrant for four, a 4-4 four, four with flying when it enters play. Opponents, uh, a chosen target opponent's land uh, will lose abilities and deal two damage to them unless they choose to sacrifice it, which is pretty cool. Um, so, you know, getting rid of their land total, dealing more chip damage to them is great for us. The Scion, first strike for 3-3, three, three, beginning of post-combat main phase, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the total amount of life your opponent has lost this turn, X out one of those cards, and you may play it until your turn ends, LOL. Moving away from that, uh, we do have some one-drop creatures here. The Paladin 1-1 one, one with Menace. We can pay two, tap it, pay one life, create a treasure. We can also pay three instant speed as many times as we want to give a creature plus two, plus zero. And if a treasure was spent, it'll also gain death touch. The Pit Fighter as a 2-1. We can pay two, discard a card, sacrifice a vampire, draw two cards, only if our opponent has lost life this turn. And uh, yeah, that's going to be the deck here. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and we'll get to you. Hive of the Eye Tyrants and the Den of the Bugbear for a little bit of added aggression through the creature or modul lands. And then the Pathway and Ridge for the land base consistency, right? We want to have a lot of red and black here. Uh, the deck is balanced. Uh, you know, it's all right. 30 or 40 to 70 could be worse. And a lot of those are duels here. So a heavier red, but, uh, you know, that by no means... Uh, takes away from the amount of black that we'll play anywho uh that's the deck tech you guys i hope you enjoy make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for not only the gameplay but the card of the day segment right we gotta hype that up let me know what you guys want to see of card of the day and maybe i've got it in the collection and we could uh pull it out and sleeve it for you guys and talk all about it so enjoy the gameplay footage and uh yeah more on that in all right, every once in a while we match against a community member within our Discord. Hypnotic, let's go. Good luck, bro. I mean, you know, turn one, creature, turn two, removal, turn three, creature, turn four, creature with haste, right? Like, I think this is good. We're just gonna need that third and fourth land. That's going to be the the thing. Clerics in the house. Let's go. For one. Grasp for the uh, Valkyrie. Braid is going to hit life's bond immediately. Let's clean up, because it's going to gain life as well, so. Uh, casting on their upkeep, so we turned it to night by not casting on our own turn. And then just before they get the draw in priority, right? So they could only interact with instant speed uh, cards there, and clerics don't really have a ton of them. Don't you dare touch my woofers. They're going to do it. They're going to nuke it for sure. The Vanishing Verse. They're wondering if they can... Okay, that is good. They're going to see this hand and be very sad, though. It's good, though. Like, uh, probably taking the Grasp. Or the Seeker. Or the rate it's really hard to say. The seeker, because we don't have that fourth land confirmed, is probably better. Yeah. Oh, but we do draw it.
take a little gander, see what we can get from them. Unless they're willing to block, of course, right? If they don't, we're getting two cards. Yeah. They're just cleaning up the binder. That's fine. One damage here, and then we're in onto the blue and black source. They take the two damage, four cards in hand. Land in play for four. Phantom in play, don't care. No, it's just not, it doesn't really get in our way. We're just going to slam through it if we can. They could still exile the outlaw. Or the town raiser is also quite formidable. Lots of pressure here. Voice of the blast. Holy Toledos. Let's just snag it. Attack in. Good game. Oh, we burnt through their hand. So much removal. And uh, such a nice field aggro-wise. Alrighty. On the draw, not my favorite thing. But we have a really nice one drop. We have a really nice two drop. Our turn three. Uh, we'll go to night. We'll cast on their upkeep. We just need some more land there. Yeah, nice. Pit fighter in play. And that's just going to hopefully get a little bit of damage in early game. Well, we can, we can hope anyways. So let's take our two. Cutthroat out. We top deck Stormseeker. Oh, man. Crazy. I guess it depends what they drop. I might just Stormseeker. Wow. It's gone tonight. I have no words. They remove the outlaw. Totally acceptable. I get that. I get that. But now it's just not better it's like equally as bad if oh man it's a good thing they had uh, some form of removal or mitigation because we we're coming in with an extra four damage there uh a double draw off their deck for ourselves and yeah, that's not gonna stop us i see your dragon and i raise you two more dragons <laughs> Good game! You didn't get to see my other dragons, bro! <laughs> when you make a dragon deck scoop with a dragon that they play it on you first. Come on! Come out and play! On the Drizaw. With Rahildza. I don't know. I, I, I try. Lots of removal of- Oh, you dirty dog. You dirty dog. It's- it's the cutthroat. You- you're gone. Unless they have their own removal, and they're like, well, I'll just remove it. And then I'll want rid of their removal, right? Oh! Well, that's a good start to the game. For Lobo Blanco. Let's see how we can, uh... At least make them pay for what they've done. Right? No exile in the library. It's frustrating. We could have had Spike Field Hazard here. That's an option. Or the uh, Flame Blessed Bolt, I guess, is another good one. Yeah, we're taking three damage. I'm just going to try to get that, that Blood Vial out in front of it. Gnarl out, forest revealed, three cards in hand, four after their next draw. Alright, um, you know, nice removal here into the blood vial. 
Should be all right. Pass to attackers. Hashtag get wrecked, bro. Mitigate as much damage as we can. They play a land and then replay the shade. It has a landfall trigger, and whenever you play a land, you can cast it from the grave, which is cool, as well as kicker for three, uh, which is great. So it could be a five, two, right? The two plus one plus one counters on it if you kick it. Land in play, shade available. Not enough mana to kick, but they do play it for two. Our turn. Land out, vile out. They guaranteed have removal in hand. Right, we know this. There's no way they, they would have uh, left that without removal. Four cards in hand other than the land for five that we can see. Lair of the Hydra, accessible. Deadly Brew, we have to sacrifice. You dog, nice. Yikes. Permanent uh, from graveyard to hand. They choose not to. They just keep it there and play it from the grave again. Woof. Down to two unknown cards in hand plus the land. This is going to really actually help. They picked up a second Hydra, though that land that is uh, going to give us a little bit of a problem later on. But we do deal with one of them, and uh, we've got another Tyrant that can deal with the other. They immediately sacrifice it down to four, playing to five with the Blood Token available. Three cards in hand with the Skyclave Shade on deck. Cannot block. Ren and seven. Five lands, minus three for a five-five True Folk token creature. It will grow in strength, uh, or power and toughness, I should say. Quite frequently. We grasp it. And we blast it. Saving our removal as much as we can. Alright, we're at 15. You know, I can take a little bit of damage. Another red source in play. Potentially, you know, 5 damage. If they want to activate that lair, I would take it. Two for one on a land, it's not great, but it could be worse. We also have our Hive uh, active, probably uh, looking to snag that Planeswalker. No snow lands, uh, no blood on the snow is what this signifies. Nissa has landfall, can minus five to bring something back. Uh, creature though only, so we won't see that. Do they have it become a 3-3? Three, three. They do. We blast it. Right? Get out of here. So that's another way to deal with lands, I suppose. If for 3. Uh, they played a land this turn. I might just double down on Nyssa. Well, no, we can use the land to attack Nyssa. Let's kill the shade. We should have killed it first. They can't play a land here, though. Uh, if that is what they had in hand. And we'll just get over there with our tyrant as well. Could be removal here. Get slayed. Take the shade. Oh, yes. I wasn't even thinking of that. That's a beautiful play line. Um, no more will we see that shade's landfall recursion based ability being replayed from the grave. I was a little worried about the kicker there. We don't even have to, though. Pit Fighter in play as well as a chump blocker if we need. 12 life uh, available. And I would say we may. If we can get some nice top decks, gain advantage here. Uh, there's no saying what they have. They do have access to the blood token, right? So they can cycle a little bit through their deck. 
if, uh, see, now I would have blood token that land away, maybe. What do I know, though? Hydra is going to bash us. Four, right? That's a four, four here. I will take it. Down to eight. Risky bisques. Oh my god. Becky, would you look at her butt? I like to move it, move it. Let's get in there. That's a big diglet. LOL. And oh, we had to play this turn. What am I doing? I'm the Diglett. We're fine. We should have played the Cutthroat. I was like, to hold on to this. I forget that we only get it till the turn. Read the cards, HGG. You're supposed to be the commentator here. At the beginning of post-combat main phase, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the total amount of opponent's life lost this turn. Exile one of those cards for the rest on the bottom of your library in random order, and you may play the Exile card this turn. Only this turn. No blocks. Down to four. I mean, you know, it would be worse uh, if we had to. We're hitting for seven, eight, nine. Not enough. But I will swing and play the creature. Don't try to get removal, you ding a -ling. LOL. Really? I will definitely allow that. We're going to knock out the ability. So we didn't have to deal with that land anymore. Unless they're paying two life. And, uh... But no, it's, it's lost its ability even if they don't, like, uh... Even if they do pay two life, it can't become a creature. It loses the ability immediately. F. Uh, it's nice to misplay so badly and still win the game. I like that quite a bit. I mean, you know, maybe they deal four damage to us here. I shouldn't get ahead of myself. Because this was a close match. Despite our misstep. Uh, they just gain a lot of life here. We're not taking damage, but that hook could kill us later on. It is an enchantment as well. Let's get after it. Hit for three. Taking Ren and seven. Maya's really upset that we misplayed. Uh, I'd assume they sacrifice this, because it gives us lethal next turn if they don't. Unless they're holding up removal. And we just need to be careful not to have our own creatures die, uh, as that would trigger the hook a bunch. And if they play any haste, we're hooped. Omega oof. Omufka. What are they up to? Seven? Like, they've not cycled the blood token either, which is scary. Okay, this has been kicked. They'll gain life when we kill it. Oh, you dirty dog. They have to hold removal because we have menace. So if they have removal, they win. If not, we win. Are we lucky? Yeah. There's no way they have instant speed removal for one. Nice. Uh, we could have also Storm Seekered uh, for three and the Abrade. Uh, that would have worked as well, potentially. Um, so a couple different play lines there we could have taken, right? All right. Four of a kind, baby. Let's roll. If only we hit three land, I would... If we hit three land, I would do this. Um, with Mulligan. This looks better. Toss a fire. Ooh. Wonder what deck it could be. <laughs> People just won't give it up, will they?
They love the clerics. Clean it. turn. I mean, the purveyor is good. It gets in the air. We have to really prioritize um, the abrade on the captain, I guess. Or even, like, the voice of the blessed when it answer or enters. And then grasp kills Righteous Valkyrie. Picking up another piece of removal. At a certain point, we might just want to pop one off. Ooh. Woof. Maybe they pull a cleric and target the captain and we snag it. We didn't get the... What? Oh, because it's... Not being cast, it's just entering immediately. It's not cast to the stack, it just enters the battlefield from the ability. You can't react to it. Oh, my life is ruined! My life is ruined! No, I'll be okay. Still very happy with this. Oh, you getting punished, boy. You getting punished. And if we would have dealt with the first one when we thought about it, we wouldn't have anything to deal with. But I was like, no, you can get extra value if you just wait and take it on the stack. <laughs> no! All right, we don't have a field wipe, uh, which is... A little worrisome. It's a little worrisome. Yikes. Um, this is still a match somehow. Oh my lord. Please have mercy. Let's just mitigate some of the damage coming into us here. They've got the exile, which I don't really appreciate, but then we can trade with the captain still. So, like, here we're winning the, the contest. Now, I guess the pro move would be to exile us and then bounce the token. Right? Because we get a 3-2 token from the exile. Maya in studio and just, just like that. She's like, I do not want to be on camera today, please. We didn't agree to this. I didn't didn't even do my hair, Dad. <laughs> he just walks away all sassy. Alright, so, you know, here's that 3-2 that we were talking about. We can block, you know, fairly successfully. Other than they've gone just so wide. Down to 9 life, and we don't really want to play our grasp so much these days. We hit for 4 if we double grasp. But it's like, what else do you do? Oh, sad. To think that we just could have dealt with it initially, and uh, we didn't. She's back. Can't stay away. It's like, oh man, there's new foam on my wheel. I'm gonna claw this up so good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shred this new foam. So much quieter with new foam on it for some reason. Do not understand. Stifle in play. Another. Oh my gosh. Hit for four. Down to one. Still a match somehow. Good game. Oof. 
absolutely punished. On the draw, doesn't look great, but it's not bad. Like, you know, it's a turn one Cali, and that's fine. And then there's plenty of removal. And uh, hopefully we find something worth removing, because I think it's a control deck, which is not great. This is a... This is turned quickly into something we don't want to really run into. Let's just hit for one. And turn. I mean, we can kill the key on entry. I guess that'll be good. Because they'll spend all four mana for the key and we'll just like wreck it, right? That part will be fun. It should be a second red source, because a lot of our spells in hand are red. Woo-wee! That's more damage. Down to 15. They've done more damage to themselves than we've done to them. You know what I mean? Let's uh, take a little look at the top of our deck. Another land. Nice. And let's toss in another. Nice. Lots of land. Alright. Elden swinging in. they counter this, I'm going to be so sad. You know what I mean? That's what the hold up here is. And I know they are. It's a Walry's Disruption. It always has been. It always has been. Past turn. They punish us for being a chicken shit. We can still hold up a braid. I imagine they just bounce this. Right? They have divides. Even fading hope. That's all good. It's growing to the top, so they like what they found. This is going to be a long match. I love control decks. Sometimes. They're fun to play, terrible to play against. Kind of one of those things. We have the hive, which is nice, right? Like, we can mitigate this fading hope immediately. Get that out of town. Uh, just in case they do have a liar. They're casting on our end step, so they untap here. Draw, get a full turn. Not good. <sighs> Interesting. I mean, we should still just go for it again. Okay. I was expecting a bounce, not a straight out removal. Take the draw. We've not played a land this turn, so worst case. Oh, I guess we have. Could... Maybe it takes a little while to... Oh, it was probably a red source, is why. I should pay more attention. <laughs> oh, you guys are probably the same way. I know it. I know it. Interesting.
I'm worried about more removal spells, so I don't actually want to throw the land out there yet, oddly enough. Let's try the Tyrant. One of the dual lands. I imagine they just immediately sacrifice it. Discover. They sack the land for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have a, a nine card hand. <laughs> Down to eight. I assume we, we have to see the key at some point. All right, there's the Doomscar. Two mana up. Let's keep hunting. Those land. Ooh, ooh, oh, 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 oh. Smells like Hullbreaker Horror to me, kids. I'll take the formula. Really? No Hallbreaker to block. Dang. So that, uh, that's going to be a deciding factor here. Uh, they test our only removal on the horror. Uh, this is still a game somehow. That's a fair and playable card. I don't care what everyone says. Alrighty. Um, I think with all of the removal, this deck is positioned incredibly well within the alchemy meta. You can remove the werewolves. You can really remove the clerics. Uh, anything else that's potentially getting in your way. While applying continuous amounts of pressure that's fairly heavy. Um, you know, 5-6 with Trample is no joke. The 4-4 four, four coming in with the targeting of the land is really stifling them as well. And then, you know, you just have unlimited draw from their deck, from your deck, and, you know, a ton of removal if you're doing from your own and just more power. And then basically just playing from their library if you find something cool, right? Uh, loving the deck, thinking it's positioned very well within the meta. Let me know what you guys think, all of that in the comments below. And now we have the card of the day. What could it be? What could it be? Such a glare. There we go. Nailed it. Look at those nail cuticles. Push those back, boy. What are you doing? Are you going to go to a girlfriend like that, son? Anyways, this is Triska Delpha file, and we've got a bunch on it here for you. If you want to learn a little bit more. It's a human wizard, 1-3, giving you no maximum hand size at the beginning of your upkeep. If you have exactly 13 cards in your hand, you win the game. That is an alternative win con that I can get behind. And you can pay four to draw a card, right? Really, really easy. The only thing is you're going to need to take a double turn. So it's immediately your upkeep again. Because if you're going to let your opponent take a turn, they're going to remove this. Uh, either that or you'll need counter magic. Something to survive to the next turn. And we have uh, Slawmere Maniac. Sorry on the uh, pronunciation, my friend. 
Um, but then the art station profile here as the artist, if you want to check that out, they've done tons of really cool work uh, within the fantasy space. Obviously, some of this doesn't look like magic, but that's what makes it cool, right? So you can check out uh, the art because this is uh, pretty cool. And I don't know if you noticed this about the card, but we'll switch back. This is a promo that we have, you guys. Instead of me holding the card up like a ding-a-ling, here is what it looks like in good quality, LOL. And of course, these are double-sleeved by our newest sleeve sponsor, Titan. Um, what even is this? Titan Shield. <laughs> I should know that, uh, which is great. So check them out. We've got some links provided within the Linktree link if you want to get 15% off through the Amazon store, stuff like that. Anywho, thanks so much for your time and attention. Have a magical day. Let me know if you guys are enjoying this closeout segment card of the day or not in the comments below. And if you have a suggestion for card of the day, let me know as well. And maybe we'll dig it out of the old collection. Sleep it up and uh, set it si aside, uh, which is nice. We have so many cards to do. So I figured why not just do one a day, right? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Anywho, I'm rambling again. Bye-bye. <laughs>